Good morning, and thanks for tuning in to Notations of a Nappy Girl, episode 50. Yay! We made it to 50. Thank you so much for those who watch, who subscribe, who peek on occasion, what have you. I appreciate you. I really do. Um, I always say I'm going to be short, but today I am going to be short because I have a bit of a headache. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today is the fact that love is not supposed to hurt in any way shape or form love takes work love takes time love takes dedication according to my chest love is suicide whatever we have a myriad of beliefs about love but the one thing that we all seem to agree on at least most people is that it's not supposed to hurt um and i say that and i mean the love from a friend from a parent from a spouse from a significant other a partner whatever it is not supposed to hurt. And just like, like we talked last week, there are a number of different forms of cheating. There are a number of different forms of abuse. And none of them should be tolerated, depending upon your situation, depending upon who you are. It does not matter. Nobody should do things to maliciously hurt you. Um, there's verbal abuse in which, you know, it's just somebody calling you out your name or yelling and screaming at you or constantly putting you down. You ain't nothing. You ain't never going to be nothing. Um, you know, bitch, whore, slut, cunt, whatever. Stuff like that. Those are words that we should never throw towards a loved one because love is universal. And we're just supposed to have that for our fellow man. And when you no longer feel that for the person that you're with, let them go. Don't try to tear them down and hurt them. Um, on top of the verbal, there's emotional abuse in which typically an abuser will separate you. Um, they will socially isolate you, you know, and then they, they and it starts with little things where they're just kind of possessive and, oh, he don't want me to wear that or she don't want me to talk to them people. They just really love me. That's what it is. Love is not about control. Love is free flowing. It goes both ways. It's like water. So you can't really contain it. But you have some people who will try. And with the emotional abuse, it ties in with the verbal, except it's more low key. You know, they're not necessarily calling you out your name, but they're telling you what you should wear, who should be your friends, where you should go, what you should do for a living what your goals and aspirations should be. It's almost as if you live a symbiotic existence. They're living through you. Um, and then, of course, there's the physical abuse where, you know, I don't care if it's once a year, once a month, once a week, or once every five minutes. God damn it, ain't nobody supposed to put their hands on you. I am not an advocate of abuse. Now, I do believe in spare the rod, spoil the child. Yeah, you're supposed to whoop your kid if they do something wrong, but you ain't supposed to whoop your girlfriend. You ain't supposed to whoop your husband, you know, you ain't supposed to whoop your partner, your significant other. I mean, comedians joke about it and people talk about it all the time, but who want to go kiss on somebody who I this damn big because you can swole they eye up, you know, where is the sexiness in that? There is none because the basis of all forms of abuse starts with control. They can't control their own stuff, so they're going to try to control you. There's also sexual abuse that happens within relationships um, with, you know, forced sexual acts, things that you don't want to do, things that make you uncomfortable, things that you just don't care for, that you've told your partner these things, and they still either verbally coerce you or they physically abuse you into it's submitting is the word I'm looking for to these acts, stuff that hurts. If you don't like it, gosh darn it, you don't like it and you don't have to do it and can't nobody make you. It is your body. My The reason all this is at the forefront of my mind is actually for two different reasons. One, I had an issue with a potential client um, who I met with and I didn't like the situation. I didn't like the way it felt. And then her guy went so far as to hit her. Um, they weren't in front of me, but we were in the same proximity. That bothered me. I blogged about it. Of course, I called the police. A lot of people don't like to get involved, but I will get involved. I don't give a good gosh darn um, because nobody deserves that. Um, and then two, I had the joy of meeting a young lady and befriending her. Wow. Like eight years ago, we worked together and I found out she wrote a book and I never read the book. I hadn't gotten the book. We lost contact for a number of years, got back in touch through Facebook and I went out and bought her book. I ordered it from Amazon. 
it was a short book. It was short, sweet, to the point. It was a memoir. And um, I knew parts of her story from working with her because some of the things that I read in the book, I could say, wow, I remember when she came to work and she told us about that. Or, wow, I remember when she was dealing with that. And it was almost cathartic for me to finally read her story because I heard bits and pieces. But, you know, people never tell you everything because they don't want you to look at them a certain way or pity them or what have you. Um, but I read the book. And it had me in tears because then I kind of cross related it to the issue that I had with the potential client. Um, and this young lady is a true survivor. I've survived a lot of things. She survived a lot of things. And I was just in awe because a lot of it was about physical abuse and sexual abuse within a relationship. And it was like, wow, people are actually dealing with this. People are actually going through this. And don't get me wrong. With me studying psychology, I know people are going through it. I know there's a lot of ugliness in the world. Um, I watch Investigation Discovery incessantly. So I know people hurt those that they profess to love. But to have somebody who was close to me, who I knew and worked with every day, and she was always so positive at work, even when she would talk about the things that she was going through, it kind of struck me as strange because as I went back, because I actually go back and watch these, and I went back and watched my videos, and I hadn't done one on abuse. I've done them on self-worth, but in order for me to cover self-worth, I have to cover abuse because your self-worth and the way that you see yourself can be directly impacted if you're being abused. That they kind of, you know, can go hand in hand. They coexist and have to excuse me if I keep looking at myself, something has been eating me up, so I have a bump here, a bump here, a bump there. I must taste good cuz these Florida bugs are killing me. But it's like when I read it and I went through it and I'm like, damn, I'm glad I never had to endure certain aspects of things that she had to endure. But then when you deal with the real life issue of the abuse is actually real in people's lives, you start to realize that to some degree it's sad to say that we have all experienced some level of abuse by somebody who said they loved us. Whether it was a parent, a child, a friend, and yes, people's children do abuse them, um, a friend, a lover, a confidant, whatever. And I had to sit back and I started thinking about different situations in my life in which I've had people abuse me and I've allowed it and I've accepted it. And that's something that I've consciously worked on for years to change. Um, to forgive is one thing. To forget is a totally different scenario. And I feel so passionate about it, I can't even get my words together because abuse is something that I don't like and I don't like to think about it. But my thought for you guys today, and I'm at eight minutes, so I was not short. I'm sorry. Um, the bottom line is love can't fix everything. And no matter what your situation, love is never enough. Um, love is something that you have to work at every single day. You have to cultivate it like a garden. You can't just plant the seed and expect it to grow without it being watered, without the soil being turned, different stuff like that. So my message word for today is typically how it is every week. You know, love yourself first, the rest will follow. And if you love yourself completely, people who love you completely will come into your life. But I don't know. I, I feel like I want to cry. That's crazy. Love is not supposed to hurt. It's not. It does not hurt. And there are resources. If, you, if you're if you going through something similar that I touched on in this video, there are resources. Just like you can get on YouTube and watch me, you can Google. You can look it up. There are shelters. There are counselors. There are therapists. Hell, there are family members and friends and whatever else the case may be. The situation is not so hopeless that you ever have to just stay in it and endure it because you don't deserve it. You don't deserve the physical. You don't deserve the verbal. You don't deserve the psychological, emotional, and or physical. Nobody has the right to abuse you. Don't accept it. Put your foot down. Make your preparations. Always be safe because stuff, you know, lack of a better term, when shit get funky, it can go south really, really quick. So make your preparations and do what you have to do to extricate yourself from those situations. But just know God made you in his image and you are beautiful and you are worthy and you are lovable and you do not never, ever, 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 ever 
deserve anybody to try to take that away from you just for the sake of saying that you're in something. I guess that's it. Um, Because I can go on and on and I don't want to. So be good, people.